Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Jack. I'm glad to spend some time uh, with you to share the lessons that I've learned on Protex. <clears throat> I also want to share some experience that we at Camp Partner have on Protex. So I want to divide today's uh, talk into five uh, parts. So I'll give you an overview of target protein degradation, followed by description of the dozen also small molecule ligands for E3 ubiquitin ligases. <clears throat> because nuclear hormone receptors are the class that have been studied the longest. So I'll talk about that, followed by um, Protex for kinases. So whatever have not been covered in the first four sections, I'll make it up in the last section. Protex is a molecule with three parts. You have a linker that links target protein and E3 ligase ligand. So this molecule serves as a molecular glue that pull target protein and E3 ligase together into prox proximity. So once proximity is achieved, E3 ligase would transfer uh, ubiquitin molecules onto target proteins. Once ubiquitin molecule number is big enough, the target uh, protein would become a painted target, so to speak. So protosome can recognize it, come in and degrade the target protein into amino acids. Online, there's a beautiful cartoon depicting the whole process, the movement, how a whole process works. So I encourage you to take a look of that cartoon if, when you have a chance. Protex are really, really hot. Uh, if you look at the number of publications, the number of papers in 2019 were exponentially more than previous years. But if you had a chance to do the same thing for the number of papers on 2020, they would be ex exponentially more than 2019 even. Many small biotechs have been funded to uh, take advantage of the uh, targeted protein degradation uh, technology. <clears throat> and all big pharmas have some uh, you know, efforts working on Protex. Just like any innovative ideas, we all have this hype and overpromise uh, stage. That's where we are with uh, targeted protein degradation. Depend on the clinical outcome of evidence to protect one on ER, one on AR. So we'll see how this uh, trend goes. Ian Churcher actually summarized the physical requirement for six events to happen in order to orchestrate target protein degradation. The protein must access intramolecular compartments, both target protein and E3 ligase. Therefore, to form ternary complex to enable ubiquitin transfer. In order for the transfer to happen, the ternary complex must have appropriate conformation so the two proteins are in vicinity of each other. So generally, this complex is U-shaped, so the two proteins meet each other closer. Just like any uh, equilibrium, the induced ubiquitination um, rate must be faster than removal of ubiquitin. Otherwise, you're never going to have enough number of ubiquitin on your target protein. Uh, and also the target protein must be recognized by proteasome once you have enough number of ubiquitin. Finally, again, like uh, uh, equilibri equilibrium, induced degradation rate must be greater than the rate of de novo synthesis. Here, uh, a few cartoons are very uh, enlightening about the mode of action of Protex. So once the Protect binds to both uh, 
uh, E3 ligase and the target protein, actually the ternary complex undergoes dramatic conformation change so that the complex look like a U shape, almost like circle, you know, it's not totally closed circle. That uh, E3 ligase and your target protein are very close in um, proximity. Uh, so that uh, E3 ligase can transfer ubiquitin molecules onto your target protein. So this is why this process often is called proximity-induced uh, degradation. Before uh, uh, Protex, uh, ligand-induced target protein degradation was known. For instance, selective uh, estrogen receptor degradator, this molecule uh, by uh, AstraZeneca, full vestrant was approved by the FDA in 2002. That's almost 20 years ago. Uh, even though this molecule was originally designed as a quote unquote pure full antagonist, it was later uh, discovered that this molecule also induced uh, protosome mediated degradation of ER alpha. So it's sort of uh, uh, targeted protein degradation. But this molecule has incomplete receptor occupancy uh, because of the uh, you know, steroid and this lipo uh, side chain. It has understandably poor solubility and bioavailability. It can only be given as an intramolecular, uh, intramuscular injection. More selective ER degradators have been discovered using very small, greasy degradants. So here are two examples. The molecule on the right effectively inhibits MCF7 cell proliferation. It has a good ER alpha degradation efficacy. <clears throat> uh, Many companies have jumped the bandwagon of CERD. Uh, Gilead bought this Brilanestrin from a small company in uh, San Diego, which is this company, uh, this drug is in phase two or phase three right now. AstraZeneca's uh, CERD uh, just recently successfully completed phase one clinical trial. I can't help to uh, share a little trick I learned during the study of CERD. Simply transforming phenol into pyridine. There was a 11 fold decrease of uh, protein binding. So a little trick can have big impact in uh, drug design. So that was ER, but for selective AR degradators, there have been some effort as well. So these two SARDs were discovered by uh, University of Tennessee. Both of them exerted broad scope AR antagonism. Because they're small molecules, pretty small, they have good adamant properties. So both of the SARDs induced about 80% tumor growth inhibition of xenografts from uh, Enzolutamide-resistant VCAP cell line. Mammalians, like human body, we have about 600 ligases because they are so important to our homeostasis of proteins because proteins are made, degraded, you know, at all time. Uh, however, uh, so far, we only have taken advantage of about 10, a little bit over 10 uh, ligands. So we only have small molecule ligands for probably a dozen uh, E3 ubiquitin ligases. So there's a lot more we can do. Uh, so here are the more popular one, uh, E3 uh, ligands. Natalie is a small molecule uh, ligand for MDM2. Uh, methylfastatin is a ligand for CIAP1. And this uh, VHL ligand is, surprise, VHL ligand. Jay Brenner at Harvard 
Well, now he's the president for Novartis now. But when he was at, at Harvard, he pioneered these immunomodulatory drugs as small Q ligands for E3 ligase cerebrum. <clears throat> for instance, lanolidomid bound cerebrum can proteasomally degrade to specific B cell transcription factors, IKZF1 and 3. Elgin has done a lot of work on IMIDs. <clears throat> they could serve as cerebellar ligands as well. For instance, Celgene uh, used CC220 to improve Icaros and Aeolos degradation. Linking JQ1, I'm gonna get to that later, and TD106 uh, at the bottom right, induced BET protein degradation. A group uh, in Japan led by NATO uh, discovered a similar protec, but they called it specific and non-genetic IAP dependent protein eraser. But I would just call it uh, protec. Why have so many names when you are doing exactly the same thing? However, this protec degrade, degraded CIAP1 and XIAP. These two are very, very similar, they're cousins. NATO found that longer linker than what is shown also led uh, degradation. And changing the caro center on this JQ1 prevented degradation. So this means the uh, binding to the uh, target protein is very important, needless to say. <clears throat> Fiali was a postdoc for uh, Craig Cruz at uh, Yale, but uh, during his independent academic uh, career, he was the first one to discover the uh, Van Hippo Lindo ligand. So this uh, particular small uh, ligand has an in vitro affinity of nanomolar. It was the best in class ligand for the LHS2 region, as shown on your right. He also found that the T butyl group boosted potency, although the fluorine gave you the uh, weaker affinity. We need two exactly the same E3 uh, ligands. What do you got? You get homoproteins. For instance, CM11 links two VHL ligands. It led to potent, complete, and prolonged degradation of VHL in different cell lines. The bottom one, CC15A, was highly potent and efficient cerebellum degrader. So basically the protect killed itself. So you would call it a uh, uh, suicide, right? But since they are homoprotects, I would call them homocide. But if you link two different E3 uh, ligands together, then the outcome is uh, unpredictable. You can only be, find it out from uh, experiments. So for this heterodimerizing protect, it induced potent and rapid and profound preferential degradation of cerebrum over VHL in cancer cell lines. Although at lower concentration, weaker degradation of VHL was observed a little bit. There are also haloprotects. So basically you attack halogen onto a E3 ligand. They are of course more drug-like because they're smaller. Uh, for this particular molecule, it has a binding affinity to VHL proteins of 540 nanomolar. It could uh, degrade halotech 7 fusion protein. As you can see, this could serve as a useful genetic tool to chemically knock down proteins. Monoclonal antibody and protect conjugates are 
very popular now. You can see it's a double whammy to attack one particular target protein. <clears throat> Carolyn Batuzzi at uh, Stanford discovered this lysomal targeting chimeras. She even founded a company called uh, Lysia to take advantage of her discovery. It's remarkable that the concept of Protec was founded only 20 years ago. In 2001, Cruz and Daishes published the paper on the first uh, Protec. Uh, the E3 uh, ligase ligand was a 10 amino acid peptide. It had a low potency, poor cellular permeability, and of course, it was metabolically unstable. So as far as a drug is concerned, that was not a very good drug. However, the concept literally revolutionized uh, drug design. So I wonder if there's a Nobel Prize in it at some point. The initial efforts in um, Cruz group or Fox on nuclear homoreceptor at first, they discovered the first non-peptic E3 ligand. Of course, naturally it's more drug-like in comparison to the previous uh, peptide uh, ligand. So this uh, protect partially degraded AR at 10 micromolars, so it's still too weak. For well, this AR, uh, they, they used MDM2, another uh, Natalie, as a uh, E3 ligand. Xiaomeng Wang, Professor Wang at uh, YOFM, University of Michigan, has done a lot of work in the field of target protein degradation. <clears throat> he linked the AR antagonist and the uh, VHL ligand with soluble and rigid linker. So this molecule is a hundredfold more potent than the uh, AR antagonist on the left. It reduced AR protein level by greater than 95%. It suppressed AR regulated gene expression. A single dose effectively reduced AR level in xenograft tumor tissue in mice. Everyone wonders, you know, what uh, Avenus AR Protect uh, clinical compound look like to the best of our educated guess. So this is uh, the inferred structure where um, the enzalutamide might and VHL ligands were linked with a very short uh, ether linker. So that was AR protex. For ER, there are a lot of work done as well. So Cruz, this molecule, mediated, uh, mediated catalytic ubiquitination. It is highly specific for their target, although the uh, ER receptor antagonist itself was not. This uh, theme you will be seeing over over again is that uh, Protex can boost the selectivity exponentially. So this molecule Protex was efficient in in vivo knockdown in mice. Professor Wang's uh, ER Protex has a DC50 of 0 0.17 in the uh, MCF7 uh, cells. DMAX is awesome, almost 100%, but TMAX is a little bit uh, short. It is more effective than full vestrant in cells. So this is almost a given because a uh, third is so small. If you go through all the trouble making a protect, it has to be more effective. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Again, you know, everybody wonders what ARV471 looks like, uh, nobody knows. But to the best of my guess, it would be 
something looked like the bottom right. So we'll have to uh, wait and see when um, Avenus discloses those structures at some point. This is not a cancer target, but it's still remarkable to me because a group uh, in China discovered a orally active protect for HMG CoA receptor. Uh, they linked uh, VHL ligand with uh, lovostatin, which is the first marketed uh, uh, statin uh, called uh, Mavrocor by uh, Merck. So, as you expected, this lactone is a prodrug. In vivo, it becomes acid, which is more potent. I think it's remarkable for this such a big molecule to be uh, orally active. Kinase inhibitors have been extensive studied. So I think FDA has approved over 60 uh, kinase inhibitors. So they are lower hanging fruits for medicinal chemists and uh, uh, drug discovery uh, you know, in general. So making protect for them is uh, <clears throat> it's an easier thing to do. So it was also Cruz who discovered that a 12 atom linker was ideal to link this uh, RIPK2 uh, inhibitor with uh, VHL ligand. It mediated catalytic ubiquitination and degrade the kinase with the EC50 of 1.4 nanomolar. It is highly specific for their target, which is a thousand fold for RIPK2 kinase. This was shown to be efficient in in vivo knockdown in mice. Glidec was the first kinase inhibitor ever got approved by the FDA. So this uh, was intensively studied um, Cruz found out, you know, it's not a guarantee you just link uh, E3 ligand that you will have the uh, kinase degraded. So the lesson to learn, the lesson learned is that both the target ligand and the recruited E3 ligase should be varied early and rapidly uh, to generate a protect with the desired degradation um, profile. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be uh, barking, you know, in the barking the round tree for a while and waste your time. Uh, here, uh, a Japanese group used the methyl bastitin that binds to a cellular RAP, CIAP. This induced uh, BCR able protein degradation. The few uh, BCR able inhibitors that I showed before were all competitive inhibitors. Here, NATO found that for allosteric inhibitors, PROTEC works as well. So, SIMIB is the uh, allosteric kinase inhibitor by Navatas. It's either in phase three or probably uh, approved already. <clears throat> NATO linked it with a VHL ligand, he found out that it has a binding affinity against EBO1, CIAP12, and XIAP. It induced potent BCR EBO protein degradation. So the lesson taking home is that not only competitive kinase inhibitors are good to uh, make protex, so are those allosteric sites, as long as they bind. So binder is good enough for PROTEC. Doesn't necessarily have to be inhibitor, antagonist, or agonist. All we need is a binder. Uh, this tank binding kinase is pretty uh, potent, has a DC50 of 12 nanomolar. I, it, it totally in normal sense, but it's not that impressive in the uh, protect uh, field. DMAX, uh, 96%. It is selective against a close uh, kinase, close cousin, IKK. So this is a uh, chemical tool to act 
TBK1 as a target in mutant Keras cancer cells. For uh, anaplastic lymphoma kinase, the uh, PROTEC decreased cellular level of oncogenic active ALK fusion proteins in a concentration and time dependent manner in two cancer cell lines. So it's not a fluke. And this is also cerebrum and proteasome dependent. For this uh, protect for PI3K, it induced remarkable PI3K degradation and downregulated the phosphorylation of those uh, three uh, kinases in liver cancer cells, HGG2. It also inhibited tumor cells pro uh, proliferation by induction of autophagy instead of apoptosis or cell cycle arrest. So it has a pretty uh, novel mechanism of action. For this uh, FLEP3 protect, it induced degradation of FLT3 internal tandem duration mutant at low nanomolar concentration. It inhibited cell growth more potently than the world had alone. So that's a given too. It also inhibited fear of targets uh, of kinases. And finally, it, it induced uh, FLT3 ITD degradation in vivo. PPK was one of the first kinases that gave rise to covalent uh, inhibitor. Um, Ibritinib is uh, such a irreversible covalent inhibitor, but here, the PROTEC removed the microacceptor and linked it with the cerebral uh, ligand. This molecule MT802 recruits BTK to the cerebral E3 ubiquitin ligase complex, then triggers U BTK ubiquitination and degradation via uh, proteasome. So namely, this is a bona fide PROTEC. Like many protects, it binds to fear of target kinases than ibrutinib. It also has greater than 99% degradation at nanomolar concentrations. Very, very potent. Some group led by uh, Tingworth wanted to use this uh, microacceptor in their protect, but they couldn't uh, find any degradation uh, using the protect. However, if they use reversibly bound target, and then it worked. A group uh, in Israel uh, led by London found out by correct choice of linkers and uh, uh, E3 um, ligase ligand, which is cerebral here, they were able to <clears throat> degrade all three types of ligands for uh, BTK. So that includes reversible non-covalent, just your garden variety drug, irreversible covalent inhibitor, as well as this Jack Tolton-like reversible covalent inhibitor. So they all have uh, less than 10 nanomolar DC50 and greater than 85% degradation. Targeted protein degradation also works for protein-protein uh, interactions. Here, the PPI is MDM2 and P53. MD224 is nanomolar uh, potency in cell. It was efficacious in RS411 xenograph animal models. But uh, because of its uh, not ideal biophysical properties, it has to be given multiple IV dosing at 25 milligram per kilo every second day. But if you do it every day, probably would be uh, too toxic, I suspect. For this uh, irreversible covalent protect for uh, BRAF, it accelerated degradation of BRAF kinase by recruiting UPS in MCF7 cell line. It affected expression of MCL1 
a downstream protein of BRAF. Okay, so we have covered mostly uh, nuclear hormone receptor proteins and kinase uh, proteins. <clears throat> but there are many other uh, protect targets, um, mostly in oncology, actually almost exclusively in college. HIP2 was considered a non-druggable target for decades because the phosphate is so polar, you need a really, really polar molecule to uh, inhibit it. So the only way to have an orally bioavailable drug is allosteric inhibitor. So that was achieved by uh, Navata some seven, eight, nine years ago. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so their ship to inhibitor now is in phase two uh, clinical trial for treating cancer. <clears throat> Xiaomeng Wang took uh, Navata's uh, ship two inhibitor and then linked it with uh, VHL1 ligand and he successfully uh, achieved a ship two uh, degradation. So this was such a news. Once the paper was published, two uh, critic reviews were concurrently published as well. So it was a big deal. <clears throat> if you ask me, you know, what are the two hottest area in drug discovery or medicinal chemistry, I would say, oh, KRSG 12C inhibitors and protects. So Cruz obviously knew this better than everyone else. So he combined these two hottest areas together and created a protect for KRS G12C. <clears throat> it was able to degrade KRS G12C at the GDP uh, state because KRS G12C binds to GDP as well as GTP. Here I showed uh, previous already Jay uh, Brenner's uh, very, very early uh, bromo domain uh, inhibitor. Here, I just want to mention that the JQ1 is uh, named after the chemist who made this molecule. JQ stands for Jun Qi. So now he's very famous now. <clears throat> this DBT1 showed anti-tumor activity, although it has a per atomy uh, property with the half-life only uh, 40 minutes. So this is why it required daily IP injection. So not very good. Here, uh, Siani was the one who first used uh, VHL E3 ligands in the field. So this is the first protect with the VHL ligand. This is reversible and long lasting. It achieved unexpectedly selective removal of BRD4 over BRD2 and BRD3. So this uh, remarkable increase of selectivity is widespread for our products. Agnes has a very uh, advanced molecule probably in uh, um, clinical trial, ARV-771, as well as ARV-825. So ARV-825 recruited BRD4 to the E3 ubiquitin ligase ferriblon. Namely, it's a bona fide protect. It led to fast, efficient, and prolonged degradation of BRD4 in all Burkitt lymphoma cell lines. So this molecule has profound anti-leukemic effect. So it's very impressive. Uh, here, <coughs> uh, Protect has showed profound uh, plasticity for their interactions. So different linkers can lead to distinct target specific arrangements of ligase target interface. As you can see here, uh, depends on the length uh, of the linker, 23, 6, or 57, the binding complex, the ternary complex have completely different conformation. 
that's quite uh, remarkable. Here is uh, Professor Wang's personal BET protest. Part one has been quite a uh, hot area in uh, oncology. For this uh, protect the linking not link, it induced significant part one cleavage and led to programmed cell death in MDMB231 cell line. Protex are not a panacea, it doesn't always work. So choosing the correct linker and right uh, E3 ligase, uh, ligand um, is critical. In, it's still, uh, you know, trial and error stage for us. For instance, you know, my friend, Hollis Shewalter at UFM made this DHODH uh, protex but he wasn't able to find any uh, of this enzyme uh, degradation. Winkler, Cruz, and Churcher summarized advantages of Protex for us. They have the ability to target the undruggable proteins, proteins, many, many uh, proteins that were not druggable, we can use, it, use uh, Protex to attack it. <clears throat> It overcome accumulation of drug target because we just degraded. Drug target alteration <clears throat> because the protects could cause mutations and binding partners. We already saw over and over again, we could have gain of specific specificity like uh, BRD4 versus two and three. <clears throat> High cellular potency driven by catalytic mode of action, because once the protect molecule has finished its job, the protect molecule is free again to do another uh, damage, <laughs> so to speak. It is uh, even dri driven pharmacodynamics uh, and has prolonged pharmacodynamic effect. There are many challenges of Protex. The greatest challenge is the biophysical properties. When you link two things together, plus linker, the smallest molecule would be, you know, greater than 700. So we need optimize extensively to achieve compromise of oral exposure, solubility, and clearance. Furthermore, Targeted protein degradation has very complex functional mechanism. You need to pull two proteins together. So the ternary complex formation is pretty complex. And then you have to uh, undergo ubiquitin transfer that require delicate conformation of the ternary complex and uh, shuttling to the protosome. We have, we at Camp Partner have worked extensively on this field during the last decade. We have worked pretty much all type of Protex using different linkers, different ligase ligands. So the ligands that I showed below, uh, before we have worked on all of them. And uh, we prepare most of the reference compounds shown previously. Almost every group in Camp Partner chemistry uh, very well versed with the synthesis of Protex. In addition, our biology department has developed a, a suite of this ubiquitin protosome synthesis platform, including E1, E2, E3 activity for the inhibitor, and also the E3 activity assay for Protex, as well as ternary complex formation assay. So we have a lot of uh, assets in this field. And here, I'm just showing a example. <clears throat> All right, it's great uh, to have uh, spent some time uh, with you, uh, review um, Protex. Uh, you are welcome to contact me at jack.lee at campartner.us. Uh, keep in touch.